Ed Shepard with Save Jersey, and we are here with David DeWeese, the uh, Republican Senate candidate in the 1st District. Uh, for those of you who have been following Save Jersey, you know that District 1 is going to be one of the most contested races this year, and we have a chance to get out uh, Jeff Van Drew, who's been a really strong supporter of John Corzine and uh, Jim McCreevy in the past, and not a real strong supporter of our current governor. So hopefully we're sitting with the man who's going to be helping out Chris Christie uh, come November. You are. You're sitting with him. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Dave, thank you for taking the time to sit with us. I know uh, it's here Super Saturday. You had a lot of, well, ooh, what's crack? A lot of volunteers uh, out today uh, knocking on doors and making phone calls. Uh, in fact, I, I see out there we're about to hit uh, all the phone call goals about three hours ahead of schedule. So why do you think so many people are so excited about your campaign? Uh, I think it's the first opportunity for people to have a choice in this district. Um, you know, Senator Van Drew has not uh, had somebody really push him like we're pushing him now, and the people are excited. I think they're ready for change. Uh, you know, the economy certainly is pushing people to step up and uh, work hard for somebody who's going to, what they believe, do do the right things for them. And you know, we've seen people here every day making phone calls. Um, they're out on the streets knocking on doors, and you know, we've been working very, very hard. Uh, at this campaign, and the results are already shown. That's good. You mentioned jobs, so let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, here in Cape May County, unemployment, I heard, estimates 17.7%. 17 .7%. Cumberland County, which is another big part of the district, hovering somewhere around 12%. The state average for unemployment, 9.4%. And the only thing that these areas really have in common is Democrats like Jeff Van Drew have been running it for, uh, for at least the past 10 years. So. You know, we know that what Van Drew has done hasn't been working. Uh, what would you like to see done here to get people back to work? Well, I mean, I think what you see is he hasn't been paying attention. Um, this issue isn't something new that just arose in the last few months. I mean, the job issue has been around for a while. It's been getting increasingly worse, you know, over the last five years or so. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen our legislators do anything about it. And Amazingly, now, 50 days before the election, all of a sudden the Democrats are proposing certain jobs bills. Um, <coughs> surprise. <laughs> it's 50 days from election. My question is, where have you been? Where have you been? And then when you really look at these bills that they're proposing, um, most of them involve tax increases, which is not the answer to creating jobs. Um, I think the answer to creating jobs is finding ways to bring businesses back to New Jersey. Over the course of the last 10 years, the uh, taxes in New Jersey, the climate in New Jersey has forced businesses to leave. Uh, we saw between 2002 and 2009, $70 billion in wealth leave New Jersey. And it's leaving because the tax situation, there's much more attractive tax uh, states than New Jersey. New Jersey has become unfriendly to businesses with their overregulation. So, you know, some of the things that we need to do, number one, are take a look at the regulations that are making it difficult for businesses to establish here and for businesses to stay in business here. You know, I was talking to um, a small business owner recently, and one of the things he, he said was, look, I get these bills in the mail all the time. All of a sudden, they're hitting me for this fee, that fee, this thing, that thing. And he said, all it's doing is cutting into my bottom line. And it's forcing me to not be able to employ as many individuals as I would like to employ. It's forcing me to cut back, um, which are things I don't want to do. But the over-regulation of my business is making it very difficult for me to stay here. If you ask me today, would I locate my business in New Jersey? I would say no, because it's just not an attractive climate. So we've got to change that mentality. It's not going to be easy to do. You know, this is something that's been created over a 10-year period. It's not something that happened again overnight. And it's going to take time to change that. But I, I think we can definitely do it. And it's going to involve removal of regulations and ensuring that there are no new taxes, number one, and number two, trying to roll back some of the business taxes that are currently existing. That's always good. I, you, you know, I run a small business, and yeah, we 
like you said, we get hit with that all the time. But hey, we pay up for this, pay up for that. Uh, we mismanage this. We need you to, uh, to pay for it. Right. So yeah, we get we every time you turn around, yeah. there's another bill. There's exactly. another, another bill. Yeah. Uh, so switching gears now a little bit. Uh, I know your campaign is riding some momentum. You got two really big endorsements that uh, I'm sure your opponent would have loved to have gotten. So could you talk a little bit about the endorsements from the firefighters mutual? Or, I'm, I'm sorry, the firefighters benevolent, benevolent association and the police benevolent association. Uh, I think they, they're very meaningful, very meaningful endorsements. Uh, I think, number one, it says that they trust me, that they're satisfied from our meetings, that um, I have, I'm honest, I have integrity, and <coughs> I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. And that is important to them because they've been betrayed. Uh, they've had people tell them things, my opponent in particular, say things to them, and then do a 180 on them at the last minute. So um, they're very sensitive to that, and, and I'm honored to be able to say that, look, the public safety people in the state of New Jersey, the policemen, the firemen, the ones that strap on the gun belts every day, the ones that are running into burning buildings, uh, not many more important people in the state of New Jersey, they're supporting my candidacy. And the second part of it, which is really the most important part, is that they've committed to work hard for my campaign. Uh, the rank and file officers, firemen, are committed to getting me elected. They're going to do what it takes. They're going to knock on doors. They're going to make phone calls. They're going to raise money on, on behalf of my campaign to get me elected. They want me in there. And to me, that is very meaningful. Uh, Senator Van Drew's response was that um, elected union, union officials are not important. Uh, that's a slap in their face. That's an absolute slap in their face, and um, I think disrespectful, disrespectful to the public safety people who are very important to the citizens of the state of New Jersey. Now, one thing you, uh, that you did mention is Van Drew doing the one. I know he has a bit of a reputation of the flip flopping, like with Reggie voted forward in committee, voted against it when it hit the floor. He had a press conference with Steve Lonigan now saying it. Once he drove ocean spray out of the area, oh yeah, maybe now we should get out of it. So would Senator DeWeese, you know, would we get consistent voting if you vote yes in committee, are you going to vote yes on the floor? Absolutely. I mean, right. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to vote with my um, heart, my brain, what I think is best for the residents of the state of New Jersey. Um, Senator Van Drew votes with what he thinks is best in furthering his political career. That's what drives the votes that he casts. Um, He's about self-preservation, he's about getting re-elected, and he's not about, I don't believe he's about the constituents of the state of New Jersey. And that will be a clear difference between he and I. You know, I say he's got more flip-flops than Hoy's five and nine. And that's tough, they got a lot of flip-flops. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, mentioning constituent services too, this is... Just a little tongue-in-cheek here. I drive by his office on Route 9 every day. I've never seen it open once. Would you actually open that office up to the public? Well, I mean, I, I think that's, that's really important. Um, I think as a legislator, one of your primary jobs is to listen to your constituents. You really have to hear what the concerns are, what their concerns are, and then take those concerns and try and find a way to assist. Um, if you're not listening, you're not serving. Yeah. And... Again, this goes to, you, know, you say the office doesn't ever seem to be open, and probably it's because he's out worrying about getting reelected. I mean, that's, it's a 12-month-a-year job for him. That's what he's concerned about. That's clearly his primary concern, and it's always his focus. And to me, that's not what being a legislator is all about. I'm not going to be concerned about getting reelected. I'm going to be concerned about doing the job as a legislator and making New Jersey a better place to live. Now let's talk about, I know this, my favorite fishing pier is uh, the Route 9 Bridge, or yeah, what used to be Busey's Point Bridge. Um, the Van Drew yeah, Memorial Bridge. Yes. Uh, when Hurricane Irene came, I'm speaking from personal experience here with the, the nature of the business I'm in, I went through six tanks of gas in that 24 hour period, crossed that bridge maybe a dozen times, and it should have, you know, it was tough for us to do what we had to do because it was just the one bridge. Now, Van Drew's original plan was get the state to pay to repair it. Then they did nothing for about four years once they saw, uh-oh, Corzine's not going to give us the money. 
Um, and then it's just sat there, it sat there, it fell apart. Now the county is on, you know, has to spend $9 million just to demolish the thing. And Van Drew's solution is, well, let's just add one lane to the Garden State Parkway Bridge. So you have three lanes on the bridge, but it goes into it on the two lanes on the highway. So you just move the bottleneck about two miles up the road. Uh, what do you think we need to do with this, for this situation? Because we needed something for Irene, it wasn't there. We got lucky. We did. And, yeah. Yeah, you, you look back at how we got to where we are. Um, one thing is for sure, never should have committed to taking over the bridge, taking ownership of the bridge, unless there was firm commitments that the money was in place to repair the bridge. A mistake, a, a clear mistake. Um, you know, you had private owners of that bridge who had been collecting the revenues from that bridge for years and years and years and years. And while the um, defense that's been put forth is, well, they were just going to walk away from it. They weren't walking away from that bridge. Uh, we took them off the hook. We, the county, took them off the hook. And it was a deal that was clearly brokered by Senator Van Drew. He championed it. He was in the headlines of the paper. He took ownership of it. It's his. It's his, and and now we're stuck with a, a bridge that, you know, I think the, the latest estimates to repair it are in excess of $30 million, and there's clearly no funding to take care of that. So what we're looking at is Route 9, which runs from Cape May to the tip of North Jersey, having one break in it, Beasley's Point. Um, and also on top of that, to make that even further a problem, the taxpayers are now going to bear the burden, $9 million, to demolish the bridge. Again, there are statements, oh, well, we're going to get the financing through here, through there. No firm commitments. No firm commitments. It looks like it's going to fall on the shoulders of the taxpayers. So, all around, this has been a bad deal. He needs to step up and say, I made a mistake. I made a bad deal here. And take ownership of what has happened. The solution... I don't know if there is a solution. Uh, as you said, adding one lane to the bridge isn't a solution. Uh, it's not going to. It's not going to alleviate the congestion congestion problem that's going to result when the motorists get off the bridge. Uh, that's still going to be there. So unless you expand the Garden State Parkway for an extended period beyond the bridge, you're not going to. You're still going to have a bottleneck. So, uh, is there a solution? I don't think there is. I mean, I think. We were fortunate with Irene that we had a kind of a staggered evacuation where people started leaving on Thursday, more people left on Friday, some left on Saturday. So we didn't get to a point where um, we had a standstill, but there's that potential that something could change course in a very short time period and everybody be running out at the same time and it'd be very difficult to evacuate Cape May County under those circumstances. It's unfortunate. And while we're talking about roads too, you've been very uh, outspoken about Route 55, about how that should have been completed about 10 years ago. Yes. Uh, another Van Drew promise. So, uh, you know, it, it, this is this like a pattern with Van Drew where he's just, because it, it just seems like when it comes to roads and infrastructure, he promises, 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 doesn't deliver. Right. I mean, would, would you deliver? Uh, I mean, look. Route 55 has been out there for a long time. The issue of bringing Route 55 into Cape May County has been out there for a long time. Um, I've had many people come up to me since I, I stepped up in this race and say to me, look, Van Drew promised 10 years ago, he came to the city of Wildwood and a large group and said, I promise you I will bring Route 55 to Cape May County. It's not here. Uh, it's still not here 10 years later. And I don't know that the process is even any further along 10 years later to get Route 55 to Cape May County. I think it's important. I think it's very important. I think it could assist in the evacuation process, certainly. Um, also, Route 347 and Route 47 are very dangerous roads. I mean, they're two-lane roads. They are very highly traveled. Um, people use that as an alternate route to get into Cape May County. And, you know, we have some very severe accidents on 347 and 47, you know, fatalities. So getting 55 into Cape May County would certainly be a priority. Whether it's going to be easy to accomplish, I don't really know yet. But if I got in there, I certainly would do everything within my power to try and get the process moving along.
Now, I know uh, late, uh, very close to Election Day, October 26th, there's finally going to be a debate. I know there was a debate about having the debate. and the, but There's it's, actually going to be one before that. Oh, October okay. 11th, Millville First um, has their annual debate, um, and, that, and we will be there for that. I don't know the exact format, but we will be there for that. The debate on October 26th <coughs> is the League of Women Voters, and that will be, um, that will be the, the big show. Okay, so great. Anyone out there who wants to see uh, Deweese in person or uh, maybe actually have Jeff Andrew answer a question or two, uh, October 11th and October 26th. Dave, thank you very much. Thanks, Ed. Thank Good you. Best of luck to you. Thank you.